Hi, I'm Walt Fritz. I'm a physical therapist from New York in the United States. Um, I have a practice here in the United States, but I also teach a certain style of manual therapy, a vocal massage, some people call it, to vocal coaches, to speech pathologists, to physiotherapists, and all sorts of other clinicians. And film is here today and uh, to do an advanced class with me. Well, primarily to work with his voice, his singing um, clientele. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's go straight into the singing world because uh, I have a lot of clients coming in and they're all, I mean, 90% singer. Right. And there's a question that I always, that, that they ask me all the time, which right. is like, how does this work benefit singer? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, let me, let me pose the question to you, Film. Mm -hmm. What's a common problem that they come in with? Tension in the throat, in the neck, maybe a pain, yeah. a sharp pain, maybe just like a very pointy, like, like a pin, you know, you have a yeah. pin in your, yeah. something. It's all about like upper body kind of um, tension going on when they sing. And right. that prevents them to, you know, be comfortable on stage or singing the high pitch. Or right. some people, they might lose the confidence. Okay. Confidence of themselves, yes. Yeah. So, w as you know, it's a complex answer to what seems like a simple question. Mm -hmm. What is massage? What is manual therapy? What does vocal, vocal massage do for someone? Um, the, the older historical view is that, well, it, it breaks up knots, it breaks up trigger points, it reduces tension, as if somehow we're able to do that locally. Like mm -hmm. we can find the problem mm -hmm. and by doing a certain thing, we break it up. Mm -hmm. And that's certainly a nice thought, but it's really, simplistic too mm -hmm. simplistic mm -hmm. because the work that we do the work that you've been doing now that you've been, you're doing some of this work is is more complex because yes we might be breaking up a muscle spasm or trying to reduce some local sensitivity which is giving pain mm -hmm. but there's also the whole aspect of what happens up here mm -hmm. in the singer in the client in the patient and the approach that we've been working on here is about not just about doing something here mm -hmm but also doing something here that the patient experiences in a meaningful way up here, oh. All right? right? So why is it that this work works? Um, I think it is about local changes, but I think it's about nervous system changes, um, perception changes that happen throughout the person, mm -hmm. not just right here. Right, okay. So the next question is that, how long does it take to see the result? Okay. That's the main, that's, I always been asked about this. Yeah. So how long does it how take? How fast can it happen, right? Yeah. And how long will it last? Which right. is almost the same kind of concept, but different questions. Right. I in my work here with with patients, um, well, first of all, the first thing I tell someone is number one, I don't know if I can help them, and number two, I don't know how long it will take and whether it will last. Mm -hmm. But then once we get past that, I tell them within at most three sessions with me to start to feel lasting positive changes. And I mean lasting, how long is lasting? It can be everything from it lasts a week mm -hmm. to it lasts a lifetime. Mm -hmm. And I tell my patients somewhere in the middle, they're gonna come. My goal is your goal. My goal isn't to create a forever patient mm -hmm. who needs to keep coming back to me to help me, to, for me to do my magic. Mm -hmm. My goal is to create lasting change and maybe Part of those changes are we're skilled enough to be able to find the problem right here, mm -hmm. or maybe we're equally as skilled enough to be able to bring our client, our patient, our singer in touch with a sense of themselves, their mm -hmm. inner awareness of what's going on and help redirect that awareness so they start creating some of those changes on their own too. Mm -hmm. My goal is to create lasting change, mm -hmm. and that's what we, we strive for. How how many people will create that you never have to do another session again? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Habits come into play. Um, fears come into play. Expectations come into play. Mm -hmm. It's all over the place. But, you know, we're here for people to continue to help them along the way if they need continued help. Mm -hmm. But it would be nice if we could create a change that they could then take over the changes themselves and not need to rely on us so, so much. Mm -hmm. Okay. So... There's the next question. So 
when we like Thai people doing a Thai massage, I mean, we don't say anything. We just lay down on the the floor, say nothing, just be quiet and let them do it. Yeah. But I mean, if it's too hurt, we just oh, that's too hurt. But when someone working with you or with me, we tend we tend to ask so many questions. Oh my gosh, so many all questions. the time. Yeah. I mean, they're not going to sleep, or you know, they can't because we keep communicating with them. Right. So. Right. Why is it important to be to talk with them all the time, or right. just checking with them all the time? Can yeah. you just share your what's the benefits of that? And can you sh- talking about the sharing? How do you say that? Share decision. Share making. decision making. Share decision making. Yeah. yeah. So let's go to Thai massage first, or any kind of massage or manual therapy where the client basically comes in and they rely on us mm-hmm. to know what's wrong mm-hmm. and to know what to do about it, mm-hmm. and they can. Tune out. Maybe fall asleep, or maybe not to have to be a, a part of the experience, though. And you know what? Historically, that works. Mm-hmm. I learned my work from a model where the patient was supposed to be allowed to go deep into their emotions, mm-hmm. into that feeling of it, mm-hmm. so that they could dig deep and figure out why these things have happened to them. Mm-hmm. When I'm not supposed to do a lot of talking, and that works too. My model is one that starts to use some of the newer. Evidence the newer research on shared decision making, mm-hmm. with bringing the sense that every individual has input mm-hmm. to the work that we're doing, value that we don't know about. I tell my patients, I know a lot, but I don't know what you're feeling until you tell me. Mm-hmm. And shared decision making, and the way I teach this work and I treat this work is one where the the my client. And I are basically at an equal level of power, where I'm almost demanding film that you help me help you. Mm-hmm. When I do something in mm-hmm. here, mm-hmm. does this feel useful? Mm-hmm. Does it feel like it might be helpful? Does it feel like it might be harmful? Mm-hmm. Does it feel like I'm wasting your time? Um, and that's a lot of work for a lot of clients because they're not ever asked to contribute in that fashion. Mm-hmm. When someone comes to take my class. One of my classes, I tell them they think they came to my class to learn some nice hands-on massage or manual therapy techniques, which they certainly are. But what I really hope that that each learner goes home with is the sense of of elevating the client's input, mm-hmm. shared decision making, in helping the client craft a custom treatment mm-hmm. for each individual versus us just doing what we think is best. Mm-hmm. Right. Wow. So the next one, am I too fast? I'm good, right? Okay. You're doing fine. <laughs> so another question. Okay, another question. When do singer singers know that they need this work? Mm. How do they know? Uh, I, honestly, that's that's a, that's a question with no answers. Mm-hmm. I um so many of the speech pathologists and voice clinicians that I work with are literally traveling on the road with performers. Mm-hmm. They're doing it. At times, nightly, but they're doing it um, as a component of that larger piece of warm up, cool down, practice, rehearse all that that all those things that you know about that I don't. So that sort of individual is receiving this work regularly. Mm-hmm. Um, I get singers here at my office who come in when they've been out on the road for a long time and they're feeling a lot of vocal strain or tongue tension, and they feel like they need something for mm-hmm. a tune up mm-hmm. or They might come in to see me before they go on the road mm-hmm. to f- sort of prep themselves. I don't travel with anybody, so I don't. You know, that's not an offering for them. Mm-hmm. Okay. Let so, me- I mean, I, w- I just want you to talk about if they decided to just come to see us to have this work. Yeah. How do they prepare themselves physically and also mentally? Yeah. Yes. Oh, that's a good question. Mm-hmm. Um, because if they're coming in expecting, like you said, the time massage experience. It's going to be a it's going to be a hard transition. I I like to coach my patients when they come in and see me that I may not be like the last physio or the last massage therapist that you saw, who basically was able to evaluate you, figure out what was wrong with you, and tell you what should be done. Um, I could do that if if I have to, but you and I are going to be doing a lot of conversation while we're doing touch base work. So. Be prepared to share. Mm-hmm. Be prepared to be asked what you're feeling. Be prepared to ask, be asked questions that I actually might 
change what I'm doing based on your responses. Mm -hmm. Be prepared to feel valued that you have importance in this relationship, mm -hmm. all right? Mm -hmm. um, the work that I teach and do is typically a dry work. I don't work with massage oils or anything like that. Mm -hmm. um, we use products on our hands to help us get that grip for a nice dry engagement. So mm -hmm. that's certainly a different type of engagement um, that someone might need to be prepared for. But basically, it may just fit in seamlessly with your, your voice teaching, your voice coaching that you do with mm -hmm. someone. You just happen to use touch as part of that intervention mm -hmm. right okay yes you came here to my clinic in new york to sort of fine-tune your skills and what was interesting is you know i i'm not sure of your expectations it might have been you want to be able to get the technique better mm -hmm. and that's we certainly worked on that you know where should our hands be what we should should be we cautious of those sorts of things mm -hmm. but i think through these two days that we worked together a lot of what we learned worked on was was sent the sense of ease and not forcing yourself on someone and allowing touch to be a form of communication mm -hmm. instead of it being that sense of I need to get in there and find the right tissue. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's almost like we're letting our hands be invited and guided in mm -hmm. by, by our clients, not just with our intuitive sense of touch, mm -hmm. but allowing our, quest our questions to spark curiosity into part of our patient. So our touch becomes just a way to communicate to them ways that they can create change in and of mm. themselves. And what I've just, it was, you know, I've told you this a couple of times, how your touch has changed so much in two days from, I don't want to be dismissive, but being forceful, really mm -hmm. just going in there really quickly, mm -hmm. which I personally don't like. And you, you formed the ability to have respectful touch-based communication with me, mm -hmm. which to me shows me that, you know, hopefully you, I, I think your time here was well spent. Yeah, I think I, because before the class, I expect, I expected things differently. Yeah. But throughout two days, I learned that, you know, being an advanced kind of person doing this work, is not about having lots of tools, but you really need to know your tool. I mean, I can have less tool than other people, yeah. but I know how to use it in a more efficient way. Right, right. I can be more slower, but more effective. I can be more gentle but and still be effective yeah. because I was going, I mean, in the past, I tried to be, not I try, I didn't know it's automatically when with aggressive because right. I thought I needed to find something, just go deep, just go fast. Right. And that doesn't mean good thing. Right. It could be for some people, but it might not be good for some people, you right. know, when they want something maybe slower or gentle, yeah. you know. So I think I learned a lot of being, um, how to say, pay attention more on myself, yeah. on my touch, on everything, not only just the weight of my hand, but just the weight of my arm. Just be aware of my arms can just cause a lot of weight, even not by themselves, by yeah. themselves yeah. or maybe my body. Or something like that and right. be able to watch your you're doing all of the it's not only about where to place your hands it's about where you manage your body too yeah because i don't want to like work and then at the end of the day i ruin my spine exactly yep. so what i try to learn from you today is just a whole picture of being a, a, an effective um a vocal manotherapist right that's what i that's what i get and i think it really changed my mind Good. And I think um, it's made me more more humble. You understand that? I mean, humble because I, I mean, less can be more. That's yeah. what I'm t trying to yeah. say. Yeah. So I think I like the idea a lot. You know, yeah. because I don't want to go out and and just present myself. I'm a, I'm the best. I'm I know everything. Which, no, I yeah. don't know. I, yeah. I know a little a little when compared to your experience, yeah. right? But I'm starting to know where where should I go? Where should I stop? Yeah. where 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 how to say um where to stop and where to start to yeah. to meet the clients um clients expectation yeah. that's important exactly. yeah there's a humbling aspect to we are experts let's mm -hmm. face it we're experts mm -hmm. but there's a humbling aspect to realize that the more i learn the more i realize that you've got more to contribute mm -hmm. if i just elevate your worth in mm -hmm. this model that we're doing here and it's a very humbling experience to realize that no matter how much experience and training and knowledge i have mm -hmm. i'll never know what 
you want, what you mm-hmm. feel is safe and effective mm-hmm. until I elevate you to have that sense of equalness with me, mm-hmm. right? In okay. that sense, you talked about the tool. And I'll tell you, tool acquisition is so common mm-hmm. among all of us. Mm-hmm. We want more tools to be able to, to help with more things. And there's a saying that, you know, a, a lot of my colleagues on social media really abide by that it's not the tool, mm-hmm. it's the underlying, you know, it's the framework from which you work. So, right. you know, if we call what we do with our hands a tool, then of equal importance is what happens here with our language, mm-hmm. right? With our patience, with me asking you questions till we get to a point where, the tool of touch is reinforced by the person's, the patient's tool of input, mm-hmm. right? And I think that's really important. Right, right. I yeah. agree. Yes. Yeah.